Hey, this is Malcolm341. In this video, we're gonna look at a script I created that makes reference planes from your images with the correct aspect ratio. Creating image planes and reference objects in Maya has always been a pain, and this script lets you do it in one click, so let's check it out. So whenever I'm modeling, I like to use reference images and rotoscope around them. If you're not familiar with rotoscoping, it means a couple different things depending on the context. In animation, it means drawing on top of video footage of real people, kind of like an ancient form of mocap. In film, it usually refers to an artist hand masking each frame to separate the actors from the background for VFX shots. In 3D modeling, which is what we care about, it means using a reference image in the 3D scene and tracing around it as you model. If you're new to 3D modeling or you're not rotoscoping your objects for some reason, you should start now. Every good artist uses reference to model and rotoscoping makes it that much easier since you can just trace around it and not really have to think about anything. Rotoscope models also look way better than things that were eyeballed. This is me rotoscoping an ice cream cone. Perfect scale and proportions without any guessing. So I love rotoscoping, but I hate the tools that come with Maya and having to set up image planes and move stuff around and scale stuff and figure out how big each image is and all the other junk that comes along with that. I just want to click one button and start doing my work. So the main issue here is that I've gathered all this reference of ice cream cones, and it's all different sizes and proportions, different aspect ratios. It's all just a bunch of junk that I collected off the internet to use as reference. And to get that into the Maya viewport, I've got to drag these textures into the hypershade, then I've got to apply each one to a different plane, and then the worst part of all is that each one of these has a different resolution, so then I've got to look here and figure out what the resolution horizontal and vertical is, and then type that into the plane that I'm going to create in the 3D scene. So just as an example, we can check that out right now and see how painful it is. So first, I'm going to go up to Windows and go to Rendering Editors, and I'm going to open the Hypershade. So cool, I've got the Hypershade open, and then I'm going to go back to my Reference folder, and let's just say, here, we're going to do like this guy. It's a cool image. So one cool thing is you can just drag that right from your Reference folder into the Hypershade, and that will create the 2D texture. Just press F there to graph it. And then from there, okay, so we're going to go and create a plane, scale that up to whatever size. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to right click this texture and I'm going to say assign texture. And it's going to automatically create the material in the shading group for me. So that's great. Let's move that out of the way there. So that's not too bad, but here is the problem. And this is where you're going to waste all of your time. As you can see, this thing is squished vertically because it should be an aspect ratio of. I don't know what, something. And so now we've got to go and waste all of our time going back into each one of these images. Imagine if you have to do this like three times or four times or 20 times, and we need to figure out what the X and Y is. So 438 by 800. Now, once I've done that for one image, then I can come back in here and we can find out what vertical is. So vertical was the longer of the two, so it was 800. So we should go 800 along Z. So we'll type in 800 pixels. And then along uh, the other way, we will do 438. So 438 would be along X. So 438, enter. Okay, and so there we have the perfect aspect ratio. And then from there, you can just uniformly scale the object down to be whatever scale you need going to bring that up because now it isn't skewed in any direction. And so when we go to trace around the edge of the cone, we know we're getting the correct kind of proportions of the actual object would be in the real world. But that was insanely painful. I am not going to do that when I'm like at the office working and I'm like, oh man, I just got to grab this stuff off the internet. I got to like model this oil barrel like really fast. I need to get going. So I created a script where I would have no excuse to be able to use photo reference and be able to rotoscope stuff correctly. So I'll show you how that works right now. And you might be asking, well, why don't you just go into the camera thing and use like the image planes tool or whatever? And the reason that I don't do that is because I hate that tool. And I find it just as slow as this process, except for it's less flexible because when you've done it in here, it's not attached to the camera. So you can rotate it around. You don't have to fiddle with camera settings. If you want it to be behind a plane, for example, I'm just going to go into the four view here. You want it to be behind the grid or whatever. You got to move some slider, but here I can just like place it. I don't know. I've always just found this way to be a lot more flexible and just a lot easier to work with. You can apply a material to it and fade the transparency. You can do all types of stuff. Okay, so let's check out the new script. So I'm going to go into my reference folder of random stuff here. 
And I'm going to say, okay, I want this cone, whatever, the cherry, this guy that we did before. Sure, this thing, whatever. This one's vertically really tall. So I'm just going to drag those right into the hypershade, drag and drop. Boom, got them. And then I'm going to come over here to the textures tab, and that'll show me all the textures that I brought in. So I don't even need to frame these up or anything. So how the script works is it takes what you have selected in the hypershade, the file nodes that you have selected. And if you have a file node selected and you run the tool, it's going to automatically create the uh, image planes for you or the reference planes. So to start, let's just select that one ice cream cone that we were working with before. And you come up here and it's called image ref and you click the button and boom, done. One second, one click and the aspect ratio is correct and it's double sided. So you can see it in all the different viewports. And now you just uniformly scale it to be whatever you want. So let's do a horizontal one just so you can see that it's working. So this guy, whatever the cake, same thing, click, boom, there it is. The cake's ready to go. Uniformly scale it to be whatever size that you want to model to because now you know the width height is the correct aspect ratio. So when you uniformly scale, you can trace around it at uh, whatever scale units that you decide to work in. Just going to come and delete those guys. This, of course, also works with multi-selection. So here I'm going to select all of these guys all at once and click the same button. And boom, all of them created, all at the correct aspect ratio. Everything's good. You can see the vertically tall guys, no skewing. They're correctly tall. The wide ones are wide. And then you just come in and you know scale them to whatever size you want to work in. Just going to delete those guys again. Now you might be asking, well, that's kind of cool, but what if I work along, you know, X front instead of Z front? Or what if I want to create the image plane on Y up or something like that? I'm glad you asked. All you do is you come in here and you click this guy. And if you click this, it creates it along Z. So zoom out here. And if you come in and you right click here, you can go along X. There we go. There's X. And if you right click, you can go along Y if you have one that's square and you want to go like top down or whatever. And if you really want to, you can go X, Y, Z all at the same time. So right click and you can go X, Y, Z, boom, boom, boom. You've got it all. And then the cool thing is, like I said, they're double sided. So even if you're using backface calling, you'll be able to see them in all of the viewports and all of the cameras. And I name them here based on the name of the actual image file. So you can find them in your scene because I put capital image. So if your scene's like pretty cluttered, you could come up here and search for image or whatever to get rid of these. And they're all separate objects. If you want to create all three and you're like, oh, I don't want that one, whatever, just delete it. And then the name of it is the actual name of the JPEG or whatever file that you end up putting in here. So super handy stuff. This has already saved me so much time and so much frustration because I'm coming in. I'm like, oh, qu you know, I've already done the cone. I, I just want to do the cherry. I just want to get going. Just boom, boom. And I'm working. I'm here and I've already started, you know, whatever. Got my sphere starting to like rotoscope this guy, out, whatever, match it up. Another kind of interesting accidental feature of this tool is that it works on textures, not necessarily reference images. So you can do it on your textures too, if you wanted to. So I'm going to select these two textures here that are applied to these guys, click the button and boom. I don't know what you would actually use this for, but it's kind of interesting. I guess if you really wanted to see your textures in a zero to one fashion, kind of in the world, in case you were wondering, uh, I don't know, but it's kind of neat. If you've already purchased the full script pack or the modeling pack, this will be a free update. So you just need to download the same file again from your original email link to get the new stuff. If you haven't purchased the script yet, you can grab the script by itself in the modeling pack or you can get it in the full script pack. So take your pick. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Without viewers like you, this channel wouldn't exist. If you like this video and enjoy the channel, please support me by purchasing something from the online store. Each purchase goes towards creating more video content and keeps the channel ad-free. See you next time. Have a marvelous day.